millions are affected by this, you know, yeah. this health challenge. It's a global problem, really. And it can lead to some pretty serious stuff like heart attacks and uh, strokes, even kidney failure. It's often hiding in plain sight. Yeah, uncontrolled hypertension. We're talking about high blood pressure. It's a silent thief robbing you of your health. But what if there was a new tool, a new weapon, you could say, a cutting-edge procedure that could help people control their blood pressure? That's where renal denervation, or RDN, comes in. Today, we're going deep, a deep dive into the latest research on RDN. We'll unpack what it all means, you know, for you and for the future of managing hypertension. And before we get started, a huge shout out to London Heartbeat C Academy for giving us the material for this deep dive. You guys are amazing. Make sure you check them out on Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, and YouTube. They got some really fascinating stuff about cardiology. Yeah, it's an exciting time for RDN. I mean, we're seeing a real change in how we think about uncontrolled hypertension. Moving beyond just medications, we're looking at some pretty innovative stuff like device-based therapies. And our guide for this deep dive a clinical consensus statement on RDN. And this isn't just any old statement. This was put together by some of the top experts in Europe on cardiology and hypertension, published in some big name journals, Euro Intervention, the European Heart Journal, the heavy hitters. Oh yeah, for sure. It's a really thorough review of all the latest research on RDN. It gives a great overview of where we are now and where we're headed. Okay, so let's get into it. The statement starts off by painting a pretty stark picture of the whole hypertension challenge. It's not just a few people here and there, it's a global epidemic. Millions upon millions of people are dealing with this. And even though we have medications, there are still lots of folks struggling to get their blood pressure under control. Yeah, it's true. And that's what makes RDN so interesting. It could be a new option for those who haven't had success with the traditional approaches. So for those who are maybe hearing about this for the first time, let's break it down. What exactly is renal denervation? How does it work? So think of the nerves around your renal arteries, the blood vessels that go to your kidneys. These nerves, they're like wires sending signals. And sometimes those signals can lead to high blood pressure. RDN, well, it uses a minimally invasive procedure to kind of disrupt those signals, calming things down, bringing that overactivity down a notch. So it's like hitting the reset button on those nerves. You got it. A great way to think about it and the result. We see a significant drop in blood pressure and it's persistent. It works around the clock. The statement really emphasizes this always-on effect of RDN. It's a big contrast to medications, right? Medications where you have to be consistent, and even then, the effects can change throughout the day. Yeah, that's a key point. RDN keeps that blood pressure under control no matter what. It doesn't depend on when you take your meds or how long they last in your system. It provides a level of stability that's really tough to get with meds alone. And what's even more remarkable? The research shows that RDN can be effective for a wide range of patients, from mild hypertension to severe, even resistant hypertension. Yeah, that's a really fascinating finding. It seems that the sympathetic nervous system, it plays a big role in regulating blood pressure no matter how severe the hypertension is. This could make RDN a game changer for a lot of people. But we've got to remember, RDN, it's not a magic bullet. It's not a cure for hypertension, oh. and it's not for everyone. Right. You're absolutely right. The consensus statement is super clear about that. It emphasizes that patients have to be carefully selected. They need a thorough evaluation by a whole team of specialists, you know, to see who's really going to benefit from it. So let's talk about those candidates. Yeah. Who would be considered a good fit for RDN? The statement specifically talks about resistant hypertension. What exactly does that mean? Well, resistant hypertension, think of it as high blood pressure that just won't quit. It's stubborn. You could be taking three or more different blood pressure meds, the optimal doses, okay. including a diuretic, and still your blood pressure is high. So we're talking about people who are doing everything by the book, taking their meds as prescribed, mm. but still their blood pressure won't budge. Oh. Exactly. That's the group, that's the focus of a lot of the current RDN research. They're the ones who could potentially benefit the most. So how do doctors figure out if RDN is the right move? What factors are they considering? Well, it's a big decision, you know, a lot of factors involved. It starts with a full evaluation by a team of specialists, hypertension experts, interventional cardiologists. They look at everything, the patient's blood pressure, of course, their medication history, any other cardiovascular risk factors. So it's not something they take lightly. It sounds pretty rigorous. Oh, absolutely. It should be. We are talking about a procedure after all. But it's not just about medical stuff. The patient's preferences matter too. It's a shared decision. The patient needs all the info, the benefits, the risks, the limitations of RDN before they decide to go ahead. 
the statement, it actually goes into the specifics of how they choose patients for RDN. It's like a roadmap for doctors to follow. Based on the latest guidelines from the European Society of Cardiology and the European Society of Hypertension. That's right. It's all based on the latest evidence. And it all starts with the basics. The standard definition of hypertension. Blood pressure of 490 millimillihg or higher. Okay, 140 over 90 or higher. Oh. But it's not just one reading, is it? Nope. You need multiple readings to confirm it. Ideally, you want those readings taken outside of the doctor's office. That's where home blood pressure monitoring comes in. Or ambulatory monitoring, where the patient wears a device that takes readings all day long. Yeah, so you figure out someone has hypertension, what's next? What are the first steps you take? The foundation of managing hypertension, and the statement really stresses this, it's lifestyle changes. Cut down on salt. Lose some weight if you need to. Get some exercise. Manage stress. These things, they can make a big difference in controlling your blood pressure. Oh yeah, lifestyle changes are huge. But sometimes they're not enough or it takes a while for them to really work, that's where medication comes in, right? Exactly. If lifestyle changes alone aren't getting that blood pressure down, then yeah, you usually need medication. The guidelines usually recommend starting with two drugs, a renin-angiotensin system blocker, like an ACE inhibitor or an ARB, and then either a calcium channel blocker or a thiazide diuretic. Okay, two to start. What if that's still not enough to get the blood pressure down? If blood pressure is still too high, even with two meds at the right doses, then they usually add a third, often a thiazide diuretic. And that's when we're getting into the territory of resistant hypertension, which we talked about before, the main target group for RDN. You got it. Resistant hypertension, it's blood pressure that's still high even when you're taking three or more different medications, including a diuretic, at the right doses. It's a tough situation for patients and doctors. It sounds so frustrating. You're doing everything you're supposed to, taking your meds, and still, no luck. It can be really disheartening. That's why RDN holds so much potential for these folks. The statement suggests RDN should be considered for adults with uncontrolled resistant hypertension, but they also need to have good kidney function. That's usually measured by something called the estimated glomerular filtration rate, or EGFR. So resistant hypertension and good kidneys. What about people who can't handle the side effects of the blood pressure meds? Does the statement address that? It does. It recognizes that side effects are a real problem for some folks. Makes it hard to stick to the treatment plan. Which makes it even harder to control the blood pressure. It's a vicious cycle. For sure. And for those individuals, RDN might be a good option, especially if they really prefer a procedure over medication. After being fully informed of the risks and benefits, of course, again, it comes down to shared decision making open communication between the doctor and the patient. So it's more than just checking off boxes. It's about understanding each patient's situation and what they want. Exactly. Finding the best approach for that specific person. The statement also mentions that they need to consider the patient's overall cardiovascular risk when thinking about RDN. Oh yeah, that's important. High blood pressure, especially when it comes with other risk factors like diabetes or high cholesterol, it really raises the risk of heart attacks, strokes, and other problems. So if someone has a higher cardiovascular risk, the case for RDN becomes stronger. Exactly. Because the benefits of RDN, bringing down that blood pressure and reducing the risk of heart problems, they outweigh the risks of the procedure. Okay, so we've talked about who might be a good candidate for RDN. Now let's talk about the team that makes these decisions. The consensus statement, it emphasizes that it needs to be a multidisciplinary approach, right? Oh, absolutely. RDN, it's not a one-person show. It takes a whole team of experts working together to get the best results. So who are the key players? Who's involved in evaluating a patient for RDN? Well, the core of the team, what they call the Multidisciplinary Hypertension Team, or MDHT, it includes hypertension specialists, doctors who are experts in diagnosing and managing high blood pressure. And then you have interventional cardiologists. They're the ones skilled in performing these minimally invasive procedures like RDN. So you need the medical expertise and the procedural expertise. Yeah. Working hand in hand. Exactly. The hypertension specialists, they do a complete evaluation. Medical history, blood pressure readings, medications, lifestyle, cardiovascular risk, the whole nine yards. So they're basically getting the full story of the patient's hypertension. Yeah, a deep dive. They also rule out any secondary causes of hypertension. You know, high blood pressure caused by another medical condition, like kidney disease or a hormonal disorder. So you got to make sure you're treating the root of the problem, if there is one. Right. 
Once the hypertension specialist figures out the patient might be a good candidate for RDN, then the interventional cardiologist steps in. They assess the patient from a technical perspective. Can they actually do the procedure? So they're checking out the blood vessels, making sure it's possible to do the procedure. Yeah, they use imaging, CT scans, MRAs to get a good look at the renal arteries, the blood vessels that go to the kidneys. So they're mapping out the area before they go in. Exactly. And they figure out where those nerves are, the ones they'll be targeting during the procedure. And based on the imaging, they decide the best way to do the RDN procedure. That's it. They pick the catheter system and the technique that's best for that specific patient. It sounds like a lot of planning goes into this, which makes sense. You're dealing with delicate blood vessels and nerves. Absolutely. It's a very precise, targeted therapy. Careful planning is essential. OK, so we've covered the evaluation. What about the actual RDN procedure? What can a patient expect? Well, the good news is it's usually an outpatient procedure. No need to stay in the hospital overnight. That's always a plus. Less time in the hospital is a good thing. Definitely. The procedure itself, it's usually done with conscious sedation. The patient's awake, but relaxed and comfortable. So no general anesthesia? Not usually. The doctor will make a small incision in the groin. They'll use a catheter, a thin tube, to get to the renal arteries. So they thread this catheter through the blood vessels all the way up to the kidneys. That's right. Once the catheter is in the right spot, they use it to deliver energy. That energy disrupts the nerves around the renal arteries, the overactive ones. That's the ablation we were talking about earlier. Yep. They can use different types of energy, radio frequency, ultrasound. And how do they choose which type to use? It depends. The RDN system they're using, the patient's anatomy, a few different things. So it's not one size fits all. Definitely not. It's all about tailoring the procedure to each patient. All right. So the catheter's in place. They deliver the energy. The nerves are disrupted. How long does the whole thing take? Usually about an hour or two. Not too bad. What about recovery? How long before someone can go back to their normal routine? Recovery is pretty fast. Most patients can head home the same day. But they probably have to take it easy for a few days. Yeah, a few days of rest is a good idea. The doctor will give them specific instructions on how to care for the incision and what activities to avoid. And how long does it take for patients to see a difference in their blood pressure? It really varies. Some people notice an improvement within a few weeks. For others, it might take a couple of months to see the full effect. So patience is key. Yeah, everyone's different. Now, the big question, how long does the effect of RDN actually last? Is this a permanent fix, or do people need more procedures down the line? That's the million-dollar question. It's still pretty early, you know. RDN is a relatively new procedure, but the research is encouraging. Looks like the effect on blood pressure can last for at least three years for a lot of people. So we've got good medium-term data, but we need longer-term studies. Exactly. More research is needed to really know how long it lasts and if repeat procedures are needed? Well, RDN is still young, but the early results are definitely promising. No doubt. It's an exciting field to be watching. Now, before we wrap up this part of our deep dive, I want to go back to what the statement said about clinical trials. They had some interesting thoughts on how future research on RDN should be done to get the best, most reliable evidence. Oh, yeah. That's an important point. They really emphasized using rigorous methods to really see how well RDN works. So what were some of the key takeaways? What do they recommend for future research? One of the big things was sham controls, using those in the trials. Can you remind us what those are? Yeah. And why they're so important for RDN research? Sure. In a sham controlled trial, some patients get the actual RDN procedure, but others, they get a fake procedure. They insert the catheter, but they don't deliver any energy to zap those nerves. So it's like a placebo procedure. Exactly. That's to control for the placebo effect. Mm -hmm. That's when people feel better just because they think they're getting treatment even if it's not doing anything. So you compare the RDN group with a sham group, and that way you can see the real effect of the procedure, separating it from the placebo effect. Right, that's crucial for good clinical trials, especially when you're studying something new like RDN. The statement also said it's important to follow patients for a long time in these trials. Yeah, that too. Ideally, you wanna follow them for at least three years, or even longer, to see how long that blood pressure stays down and if any side effects pop up later on. So it's about knowing how long it lasts and how safe it is in the long run. You got it. And one more thing they recommended, future trials should look at more than just blood pressure numbers. They should also look at things like quality of life, 
how the patients feel. Right. That's important. It's not just about the numbers on the blood pressure cuff. It's about how people are doing overall, how RDN affects their quality of life. You're sure. It's about the human side of living with hypertension and how RDN could make things better. Exactly. Well, I think we've covered a ton of ground in this part of our deep dive. We have. From the details of picking patients and doing the procedure to the bigger picture of how we design clinical trials and what research we need to do next. And in our final part, we're going to talk about how RDN could change the way we manage hypertension and the bigger picture impact of this new therapy. Stay tuned. All right, so we're back, ready to finish up our deep dive into renal denervation for hypertension. Yeah, we've talked about the science behind it, how the procedure works, and what the research says. Now it's time to think about, well, what's next? Where do we go from here? What does it all mean, you know, the big picture? This is where it gets really interesting. We're kind of like on the verge of something new in medicine. The consensus statement, it brought up some really interesting questions about the future of RDM, hmm. how it might change the way we deal with hypertension completely. Like right now, we're mostly focused on managing hypertension with medications, which let's face it, can be a lifelong thing. And it's not always easy. Yeah, medications can work, hmm. but you have to take them all the time and they can have side effects. Mm -hmm. And some folks, well, they can't afford them. It's a burden. Right, but what if, and this is a big what if, we could go beyond just managing it. What if we could actually cure it? Or at least, you know, get right. people into remission for a long time. That's the uh -huh. potential RDN has. It's a pretty amazing idea, and we're not there yet. Uh. But the research, it's definitely moving in that direction. Yeah, it is. The statement also, it really highlighted how important it is to keep doing research to really understand what RDN does in the long term and to figure out, you know, who's going to benefit the most, which patients really. Absolutely. We need more data. We need to follow people for longer. And we need to get better at choosing the right patients for RDN. And remember how we talked about how RDN might be useful for other things besides just hypertension? Oh, yeah. That's one of the coolest things about this whole field. Researchers, they're looking into using RDN for other conditions where the sympathetic nervous system is out of whack too active, you know? Yeah, things like atrial fibrillation, heart failure, even diabetes. It's kind of like, who knows what else we can use it for? The possibilities are, well, huge. And as more and more people start using RDN, we have to think about the ethics of it all, too. Right. We need to make sure that everyone who needs RDN can get it, no matter who they are. And we have to be really careful about using sham procedures in trials. It's a no. tricky thing. We got to find that balance between learning more about RDN and making sure we're always putting patients first. Exactly, a balance, but it's super important. So I think it's pretty clear, renal denervation, it's got a lot of potential. I'd say so. It could really change the game for a lot of people. It's been great, really, diving deep into this with you. Yeah, I enjoyed it. And of course, we couldn't have done it without London Heartbeat Z Academy. They gave us all this amazing information. Huge thanks to them, they're doing great work educating people about cardiology, pushing the field forward. And for everyone listening, check them out. London Heartbeat Z Academy on Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, and YouTube. If you want to learn more about heart health, they're the place to go. Yeah, they're a great resource for keeping up with all the latest in cardiology. So until next time, take care of your hearts, stay curious, and remember, the future of healthcare, well, it's full of exciting possibilities. We'll see you next time on The Deep Dive.